Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. This video should be pretty simple. We're going to be talking about the instance of operator. So this is used to see if an object is of a particular type. Now before we get started, you better believe you need to check out that sponsor, DevMountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So when we are working with inheritance, the instance of operator is going to be important to us because we want to make sure we are working with an object that is of a correct data type. Now, I'm using the term data type very loosely. Basically, I just want to make sure, for example, a student is a valid user and so forth. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So what we can do is we can donut, go, huh, donut, mm. What we can do is we can go down here and we can console log and say instance of teacher. Doing a refresh, you see we get true. But we can also do console log teacher instance of user oh, capital u there do a refresh and we get true which makes sense when we expand teacher you can see in the the prototype we get user with a capital u that's because it comes from this user constructor so the object that this teacher inherits from is a valid user object which you can see from line um 22 so when you create a teacher that inherits from a user object, the teacher is both a teacher and a user. So when you're doing polymorphism stuff, you can be sure that you're working with a valid data type for whatever you're doing by checking it using the instance of. So you can do it inside of an if statement. So for example, we'll switch it up and say teacher instance of student, which will actually be false because a teacher does not inherit from student. So we'll have an else clause here and we'll console log, nope. All right, do a refresh, and right-hand side of instance of is not callable. Uh, I need to make sure this is a capital S. So it's a type student. Refresh, and we get nope. If we go back to that lowercase s for a second, refresh, you can see right-hand of side instance of is not callable. So basically it's saying, hey, this student here, that does not correlate to a function such as this one here. But when we use that capital S, well now, it's callable, so it's going to work. And basically expanding on that teacher, we can see that the, the prototype, nowhere does it contain student. So something you might be able to do with this, let's say we go down here and we create a function, we'll call it do something. And what we can do is we can create a function that can work with both teachers and students. So how would we do this? Well, we'll give it the name user, because it's a little bit more general, and then we can do a case. So if user, instance of user if it's a valid user what we can do is we can return I don't know five otherwise we can return negative one basically it's an invalid type now you could do some complex algorithm here we're just using numbers here just to illustrate the concept and we can call this so we can say console log do something and we will pass in the teacher object we created up here on line 28 and I'm going to get rid of some of these other console logs. Uh, we'll get rid of these two that we created in this video. And we'll get rid of this conditional here. So when we do a refresh, we get five. So it's a valid user. But if we pass something in here that's not, such as a string, we do a refresh and we get negative one. So that's how we can create a function to work with the parent objects. And we can be sure that it doesn't try to execute the code if the type is incorrect. All right, that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully that is helpful. What we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be taking a break from the object-oriented stuff and we're going to get into a little bit with what you might have actually expected this entire series to be about, which is working with the HTML and making our pages dynamic. Lots of series focus on this content. I, on the other hand, tried to focus on the JavaScript language pieces. So now when you go to work with the page, you actually have an understanding of what in the world you're trying to do and how to do it. So you're welcome for giving you that good quality background. Now you can go modify your HTML like a boss. So let's do that. I'll see you guys in the next video and be sure to subscribe.